Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this weekend's UFC card from San Antonio uh, from a uh, betting perspective. And for those of you that have been following along, I appreciate the good feedback. Um, this is a very contrarian approach to, to wagering, um, and it's basically the same form of, of, uh, of analysis that I utilize for all wagering opportunities, whether it be uh, sports betting, um, or wagering on stocks, which is what I do for a living, pretty much. Um, the idea is that um, if you are going to wager on anything where there is any kind of a VIG, um, there, there are two ways to do this. Right? Number one is that you can, you, you can presume that you know more than the entire public, right? Because think about it. If you have to pay a VIG uh, either way, you are making a natural assumption that the line is wrong when you are betting on a fight or a stock or a basketball game or whatever it is. Um, and if you think about it, I mean, that requires, I mean, quite a lot of ego, right? I mean, to, to feel that you are better than the entire sum of the money that is poured in uh, on these fights, for example especially with with a, with a decent sized big on either side. Um, so listen, if you still want to continue wagering with that kind of in mind, uh, then you can just continue to fast forward. And again, I'm not saying that you have to have like a big edge to bet on sports or to bet on MMA. Remember, this is not just about you know, like like trying to grind out a 4% profit or whatever it is. I mean, I presume you're going to watch the fights. You're going to have some fun and you just want to sweat and you want to have something on it. And I think that's in a way sort of healthy. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're probably giving away some, some vig long-term by doing that. But listen, it's entertainment. And as long as you're going to watch the stuff and want to have some action, I think it, I think it's fine to, to, to go ahead and come up with an approach that makes some sense, even if maybe... It's not 100% plus EV. Um, now, again, that's not the same for the stock market when you're investing and you're only dealing with like 0.01% transaction costs. Like that stuff you can overcome. But even the approach to that for me is similar. And so what we're trying to accomplish when we're, when we're analyzing these things from a betting perspective, we're not trying to say, oh, we're going to outanalyze everybody else. What we're going to do is we are going to presume that some of what goes into a line is driven by data and, and, and numbers and, and chances of winning and things like that. And the other thing that goes into a line is just kind of the public psychology and the public's perception. And essentially, if what if the public perception and and recency bias and other stuff like that is driving is driving the money on one side, then you probably are getting some decent value on the other, okay? And, and it's this very similar analysis to kind of the stock market. Like if, if you can, uh, if you ask like a five-year-old, you know, tell me about a company or something like that. They'll say, oh, I like Coke because Coke, you know, I love, I love Coca-Cola and, and uh, everybody drinks it, so we should buy the stock, right? And then if you ask even, you know, kind of a, a mutual fund manager, Oh, I love Coke. It's a, what do they say? It's the leader in the space. That's a, a word they use a lot, a phrase they use a lot. They have strong balance sheet. Great. You know, they, they, they're, they are uh, again, leader in the space, things like that. Just typical things that people say that it's obviously probably all factored in already. So if you have like a, a betting opportunity where you're, it's so easy to tell one side of the story, it probably should be on the other side. Okay. Because that, line is pretty freaking efficient and if the entire narrative suggests one thing then you're probably better off playing the other okay and and long run that is your best shot at, at stuff like this i promise you um so when we go through this what you're, you're going to be a little bit kind of like all you know taken aback by some of my approaches and some of my analysis but i'm not doing it just to be kind of a pain in the neck you know I, i'm i'm doing it because that's what I. This is really where I feel the majority of the edge is going to be uh, is going to be derived. Um, and the other thing that's cool is that you're going to bet on stuff that nobody's betting on, so you get to root against people as you're rooting for yourself, which is 
which is can be fun also. Anyway, let's take a look. And what we like to do is wait until the end of the week because at the end of the week, that's when you get a good sense of like where the public is. You absorb a decent amount of content and you see that everybody's piled on one narrative and, and you can have a really decent job of fading it. Now, normally I wait till Friday, but I'm going away tomorrow. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit early, but I think I'm close enough where I think I know what's going on. All right, so let's just start with uh, with Haley Cowan versus uh, Tamaris Vidal. So you have two women fighters here. And unfortunately, this is the fight that you don't have real consensus either way. So it's kind of hard to come up with any kind of an edge. Oh, I keep forgetting to go over the rules. Sorry. I will say that I'm going to be betting on every single fight. There's going to be one thing I'll give you every fight. I'm going to be betting on all of them. I'm going to be betting exactly one unit um, on each thing. Again, that's not the greatest money management system in the world. But again, we're doing this for fun, you know. And, and if you want to tell me, that's great. If not, that's fine, too. But just so you know, I'm going to be betting one unit each fight. That's going to be $180 for me each fight. So, um, and I'm going to put these bets in probably right after uh, the video because I, I could put them in on the video, except DraftKings doesn't really like uh, Zoom running. So it's not going to let me. Um, so this first fight, uh, Cowan and Vidal, I mean, there's really no real consensus on either side. I'm hearing a little bit on both. Um, so this is probably the one fight that I probably have no edge on. But just for you know, just for the, just for the sake of picking something, um, we will go with, well, Vidal just got a KO. Let's, let's look at it another way. Vidal just got a KO in her last fight. So as far as recency bias goes, probably don't want to take her. Um, so let's, we'll go on the Cowan side really for honestly, for no reason. So we're going to just take Cowan just for something to do. I mean, I wish I can give you a better reason. And normally I have, um, uh, and we'll get to some other, all the other fights. I'll probably have a decent lean one way or the other, but this one, I'm just going to just kind of put in. All right. Next fight you have Victor Altamirano versus Venetia Salvador. All right. So this to me is easy. Okay. So this is the narrative that's being driven by this, by this fight. You have Salvador who has, you know, he's a lot of KO upside. He's going to come after it early, but Victor Altamirano has just the better cardio. He's going to weather the storm and he's probably going to get to the Salvador in either round two or three or get to a decision. So I feel as though while people are probably playing both sides of this, I think that the majority of the public is on ML Tomorado. And the people that are on Salvador are probably playing Salvador inside the distance. So these are the kind of the, the, the lines that I feel are overvalued. Either Altamirano by decision, Altamirano round two or three, or um, or um, Salvador maybe round one. So what we're going to do is we are going to pick Salvador by decision. Salvador by decision will be plus four fifty. Let's go. I, I you know I don't know if that's it's if it's a if, if plus four fifty is good, but I know that this is that it's probably of the best of, of the plays. You know, I bet you no one's playing this side. So this is probably where you're getting your value. All right, moving on, you have uh, Manuel Torres versus Trey Ogden. All right, so here, here we go. Trey Ogden just won at plus 310. Um, and he is literally the most popular underdog, I think, on the slate. I think that... This is where all the money is piling in. And uh, there's just no way I'm playing. There's no way there's positive value on the Trey Ogden side. The, the only possible value is on the Manuel Torres side. And again, I think on the Manuel Torres side, I think people have created just kind of one narrative here. And that is that Manuel Torres is going to just come after him and just kind of get him in the first round or something like that. Or Ogden is going to just win the decision. So I once again, I think that Torres by decision is probably the side here. Um, let's take a look what his his line is by decision. Torres by decision plus 450. Let's go. So we're right off the bat with a couple of plus 450s. Um, okay, so you have CJ Vergara versus Daniel Da Silva. Now, again, this is this is a fight which is just Everybody is just so sure 
that there are only two outcomes, right? It's either going to be, as people say, De Silva's going to come after him. He's going to try to knock him out in the first round. And then after that happens, his cardio is going to fall off a cliff. And then Vergara is going to take over and probably knock him out in round two or three. Right. So these are the things that are not bettable, in my opinion. De Silva in round one, unbettable. Vergara round two, unbettable, unbettable. And Vergara round three, unbettable. I'm going to go for a, a different thing. Okay. There's two things that I'm going to bet here. It's either going to be the fight over two and a half. Okay. Or Regara by decision. Because I think that there is a road where De Silva is like, just been hearing all this, that he only has one round of cardio. And maybe, just maybe, he's going to try to fight in a way that will last him through three rounds. I don't know. Uh, it's hard for the leper to change his spots or whatever it is. But that, I think that's where there's value. Or the other value is in Vergara round one. Okay. Um, so let's take a look and see what these various odds are. So Vergara round, let's pull the spider first of all. Vergara round one is probably going to be pretty slim. That's plus 120. I don't think we want to do that. Vergara by, wow, Vergara round three. Plus twelve hundred. With a car around two plus five hundred, I thought that was going to be much chalkier than that. This is what everybody's talking about. The Vergara around two, so we can't do that. But what we can do? Oh my God! Close our eyes. Vergara around three, or Vergara by decision. Or let's look at the fight lines. Um, over one point five plus one sixty. That's just too tempting. We're just going to do that. He's not going to make it through a round and a half. All right, we, we're going to we're going to do it. Well, I think there's a lot of things you could do here, though. Vergara round three plus a million. We'll we'll just we'll just we'll just do this. No, we can't. You want to know why? Because there's too much too much narrative of that Vergara takes him out in round two. It's not going to work. We're going to have we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to go over guard around three plus twelve hundred. Sorry, guys. Sorry. All right, moving on. We have uh, Trevin Giles versus Preston Parsons. So, unfortunately, this is this is another form of recency bias that that comes into play, and this is actually not recency bias. This is this is MMA math. And MMA math is another thing that people just kind of just kind of jump on here. And if you look at this, you'll look at um at Trevin Giles, and you'll see that he lost at Duplis Duplessis. He's just had a big win. You have Delice. He beat Delice, who just had an incredible performance. Okay. So I think that there's a little bit of, of, of MMA math going on here. And Giles, you know, saying that Giles like beat all these guys or was competitive with all these guys. So I think Giles is probably getting a little bit too much love. Um, so I'm going to go with the Parsons side, just Parsons minus the 110, I think has a little bit of value there. All right. Um, moving on, we have uh, Steven Peterson versus Luke, Lucas Alexander. I, this one, I don't know why, but I'm 100% confident we're on the right side of this. You go through 100 content providers, you will get 100 opinions that Steven Peterson is going to win this fight. What you're getting is that Peterson's not that great, but Andrew Alexander is very green. He was very poor in his last fight. He can't deal with MMA, comp UFC competition, and that Peterson's just going to grind him. And yet, Peterson is only minus 155. I mean, they're talking about this fight like Peterson should be minus 280, and it's only 150 or so. So I have to think Alexander's got something. So we're going to take Alexander plus the 135 for 180. Daniel Pineda versus Tucker Lutz. Um, so this one I kind of like a little bit. I mean, you're not really getting too much on the Pineda side. 
Um, but what you are getting is this is the outside narrative is that Tucker Lux is going to win, but it could be kind of a boring fight that, it, you know, Pineda will probably try to go for some takedowns, probably get stuffed and Lutz will kind of overwhelm him maybe a little bit late, maybe like a round three or a finish or, or, or a decision. So I think we're going to go to our old faithfulness situation like that. And, and we're going to play Tucker Lutz in round two. Um, we look at, I already looked at this one in the round props. You have, Lutz in round one is plus 175, but I think this is enough, enough of a jump in round two. Like in case Pineda does get a takedown and makes it hard for Lutz to get him in round one, I think I think Lutz round two is pretty reasonable. They're really asking for it, though. To give me a Lutz round three? No, we're just going to go Lutz round two for 180. I don't think anybody's doing that. Okay, Alex Perez versus Manel Cop. Like this one, I, I actually kind of like. So, this is this is sort of the narrative. So, Manel Cop, you know, while he does have kind of some quick finish upside, he's overall like pretty low volume, you know, and and sometimes he just doesn't kind of get it done so quickly. So so. If, if, in fact, this can go a little late, maybe Alex Perez can kind of get there. And I'm getting a little bit of Alex Perez underdog love here because of his wrestling. Um, so I'm not really going to get any value on the Alex Perez side. The only real value would be something like Perez, like inside the distance, which I just can't quite do. Or maybe a cop in, again, either by decision or round three at like a million to one. Um, let's take a look and see what these odds are here. So let's see. Cop round props. By decision plus 330, I think this is very reasonable. I mean, I, I think this is a very, very strong play. Let's put the first of all, let's put the Tucker Lutz play in. We'll put the cop by decision plus 180. And he's plus 330. Let's go. Okay, uh, moving on, we have uh, Chidi Injaquani versus Albert Duraev. So we have uh, Chidi is a pure striker, um, and uh, Albert Duraev is a pure wrestler, and not pure wrestler, but that's the way he's going to win. So you're either going to get Duraev, you know, by decision, that's the uh, thing, or you're going to get Injaquani by KO. So these are the things that we're not going to be able to bet because these are just, again, the binary narrative. It just doesn't really work that way. So what we're going to either be able to accomplish is either like Dariah inside the distance or Njaquani by decision. So we're going to take a look at the odds and see where, what, the, what, what odds we're going to get on either of those things. So Njaquani by decision is plus 500. Let's take a look and see what Dariah inside the distance is just, just for fun. Dariah by any knockout submission or defuse only plus 215. Huh? That can't be right. Is that exact me method of victory? I, I don't, that's, I, I don't know. I'll, 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 I will go with Njaquani by decision. Njaquani by decision plus 500. Give me that. Give me that uh, striker's bias, which has been thrown around here. So Njaquani by decision plus 500 for 180. Let's go. Now we have. Uh, Andrea Lee versus Macy Barber. Um, unfortunately, the women's fights have been, you know, you're getting a little recency bias actually against the favorites because all the favorites have been busting. So playing kind of like this sort of like live underdog is probably going to be bad value. So I'm not going to take the Andrea Lee side. The only thing you could probably do is play Macy Barber. Um, because people will say, oh, my God, minus 210 is just way too wide. So we'll try Macy Barber either, you know, 
against Macy Barber by decision as the safe play. Um, or you could try Macy Barber and say round two or something like that. But let's let's just let's just be safe. Let's just let's just take Macy Barber. Let's see what her, her odds are. Macy Barber round two plus eight. Boy, oh boy, plus eight fifty. Macy Barber by decision minus one twenty. Problem with this is now you're getting this like, like anti anti wrestler bias. I mean, let let's 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 go for. Oh, this this is a terrible one. I have to say this is another one where I have no edge. That first women's fight, it was nothing. This one, let's you know, let's just, let's just let's just take the minus one. But I I really do encourage you guys not to bet this one. But but we're gonna we're gonna bet this one. All right. Um. Nate Landwehr versus Austin Lingo. All right. Uh, you ain't gonna like this one. But you have, this is the narrative. Nate Landwehr is an awesome guy to play as an underdog. And just a terrible play as the favorite. Because he is very reckless and he brings the heat and he brings the action. So Austin Lingo is a very popular underdog. Landwehr is somebody everybody's supposed to avoid as a favorite. So we are going to take our shot and we are going to take late Nate Landwehr. Now, if you do take Nate Landwehr again, like the guy is like really, really aggressive. So I think the people are going to play Nate Landwehr. Maybe we'll play him inside the distance. So we're going to play Nate Landwehr to win by decision plus 215. And if you haven't lost all your money yet, we got a couple of more. Holly Holm versus Yana Santos. Uh, this is going to be one where I um, uh, I end up probably, there's only two ways I'm going to play this because here's the narrative. Santos is off two, three years. She just had a baby. You don't want to bet a fire just coming off and having a baby. And yet on the other hand, you have Holly Holm who doesn't really finish anybody anymore. It's going to be a really easy fight. She's going to grind her up against the cage and win the decision. So, what can you not bet? You can't bet Holly Holm. You can't, you certainly can't bet. Well, you can bet Holly Holm, but you can't bet Holly Holm by decision. And you can't bet. Um, so what you can bet, you can bet Santos. But again, I think there's this anti-favorite bias for the women because Val uh, Valentina busted, Juliana Miller busted, all these big time women's favorites busted. Last week, uh, there was someone else busted two weeks ago. So. Um, I think that what we have to do is we have to play Holly Holm inside the distance. You have to do it. And it's either inside the distance or maybe even round three. Let's take a look at some of these opportunities. Holly Holm round three, the, 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 the narrative being she gets takedowns, 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 and gets the finish in round three is plus 14 to one. Hmm. Hmm. Can, can we get away with that? We're gonna. We're, I know we're gonna end up doing it. So why why are we why are we why are we like wimping around here? We know we're gonna do this. But let's just see if like what her inside the distance is probably like plus four hundred or something. Let's see. Um, uh, her inside the distance is plus three hundred. Maybe we should just do that. Holly Holm inside the distance plus 300 or round three plus 8 million. Well, I hate to hedge here. You guys can try either one. I think either of them are going to be good, but I, I just can't resist. Holly Holm round, because we're going to lose every other one. So this one, we're going to get it all back. Holly Holm round three plus 14 to one, 180 on our sixth takedown, finally leading to a submission. Let's go. And finally, we have um, uh, Corey Sanhagen versus Marlon Vera. So people are on both sides of this fight. but So there's no edge there. But as far as the narrative goes, I think that that there's kind of this idea that, that Vera is going to start slow. 
and then pick up the pace and have the finishing upside late. Okay. So I think that the, the, the only real value is going to be something like Sandhagen inside the distance or maybe Sandhagen really, really late. And I don't know. I don't know why I'm just like going for bombs here, but I have this feeling I'm going to be on Sandhagen around four or five unless I play him just straight up inside the distance. Let's see what the odds are. Sanhagen, well, look at, oh my God, he's plus 35 to one in round five. You have Vera is plus 2,800 round five. These, these, this is when this fight is going to end, if at all. This is, this is some really, really good, these are some good props here. 35 to 1 for Sanhagen round 5. 28 to 1 for Vera round 5. All right. I never do this. I, I'm going to change my mind. I am going to bet both these things for 90 each. So we are going to go for a round five finish. Bear a round five. And Sanhagen round five. So we just have a room for nothing to happen. And then round five, somebody, somebody finish. And then we get all of our money back that we lost the rest of the card. Let's go. So we're going to bet all these things, and we're going to we're going to reiterate what these are. Uh, 180 on Haley Cowan, loser. 180 Salvador by decision, loser, plus 450. 180 Torres by decision, loser, plus 450. 180 Bergar round three, oh, no chance, plus 1200. Parsons for minus 110, 180 sucker bet. 180 on Lucas Alexander, how can that win? Plus 135. 180 on Tucker Lutz, minus 280. Um, are we still the money line? We don't want that. Get rid of that. It was Tucker Lutz round two for plus 450. That one can't win. Plus, well, for 180. Top by decision. Sheets, you out of your mind? And Jaquani by decision? Oh, my God. So we're going to be Barber by decision? That, I guess, is such a sucker bet. And then Landwehr certainly is not going to win by decision, plus 215. So the good thing is we're going to be over um, whatever, over 12, whatever it is. And then we're going to get it all back, either with Holly Holm round three, or with either Marlon Vera round five or Sanhagen round five. And that is going to do it. Sorry for the 0-13 guys, but that's what we do when you are contrary. Good luck.